The next train arriving at Platform 1 is the Martian Express, created by modders Lucian and Sylvain. Move colonists and resources between stations, facilitating access to faraway domes, remote resource deposits, and other manned out-of-dome buildings. Find out more about surviving Mars Martian Express at the link in the video description. And a huge thank you to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring this video. I could probably go on for a couple of minutes about what exactly you do in Surviving Mars, but I feel like the, the name of the game kind of tells you what you do in Surviving Mars. But for those of you that are not in the know, this game is all about surviving up there on the Red Planet. This is the map that we're going to have to deal with, and we have some areas on this map that are going to need to be scanned. So let's immediately get started by hitting a couple of sectors with an advanced orbital probe. This is going to reveal pretty much everything you can see highlighted in green right there. So let's see what's in there. Not bad. We just discovered water on Mars. We can also go ahead and hit maybe, say, right about here. And we've discovered metal. Good. This isn't bad at all. We've got water, we've got metal, we've got concrete laying around. All we need to do now is land a rocket on the red planet and see what we can do. So let's go ahead and touch our rocket down right about here. And while that's coming down, let's talk a little bit about Surviving Mars. Because the last time I played this on the channel, it was 2019. There's a whole bunch of DLC for this game I didn't even know about. You can go underground now. You can land things on asteroids. You can thanks to the latest dlc build trains i'm excited about this i'm actually really excited about this and it's kind of fitting given that we have another mars related game on the channel right now well it's that other game's not about mars but you get the idea anyway i will link in the video description to my very first surviving mars series here on the channel for those of you that might want to get caught up a little bit with the absolute fundamental basics but to give you a bit of a summary, you send a mission to Mars, we touch down, we get some rovers, we get some drones, and we have to get the planet into a state where we can bring colonists up here. Now, thanks to my setup, I have a couple of little advantages that are going to make it a little bit easier. And if you want to know exactly how I have my uh, Mars mission set up, you can check the video description and I will have all of that information posted down there as well. But... Moving on from the explanations, getting back to the gameplay, let's start building some things. Or rather, let's start exploring some things, because that, I think, is going to be our priority. Now, we have an RC Explorer here, and we have anomalies around here. So if we go and explore this one, it's going to help us discover new technologies. So let's go and explore it. And then let's go hit that one as well. And let's zoom out, and it turns out those are actually the only two anomalies we have. So we'll get those scanned, and while we're here, we'll go ahead and queue up some scans of pretty much this entire ravine that we find ourselves in. So we'll get all of this scanned in time and see what exactly we have around us. Now, this guy's heading out to do his thing. Let's get ourselves some storage by the rocket. So my drones down here, which I think I can customize, right? Yeah, we can make them red. We'll make these guys blue. We'll get my drones to unload the cargo from the rocket. And I think I'll be lazy about it, and I'm just going to go for some universal depots. So we'll do one right there, and we'll do one right there. There they go. Look at them working. Working hard or hardly working. They're drones. I don't really think they care. They're just doing what they're programmed to do. I've also sent my RC transport out here to start picking up some metal, because we do have some metal deposits just laying around here. And essentially what he's going to do is pick those up, load them into the flatbed and bring them back and drop them off in some storage over here so that's perfect that's exactly what i need that guy doing the next step for our site here is probably gonna be power so let's have a little look at power we have eight sterling generators right now and that's gonna be absolutely perfect we'll go ahead and place them i want to say over here is is kind of an interesting spot go ahead and just place them next to this sort of little ravine thing. Anomaly so we'll go analyzed. one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and we'll have our generators there. And those will, in time, generate some power. Now, 
before we even get into all of that, I do want to take a minute and I do want to look at research. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place right now. I'm trying to make sure that we have everything up and, and doing what it needs to be doing. So let's look at research because this is this is going to be extremely important. Now, at the minute, we are generating 300 research per soul. That's per Martian day. And that means that some of these things are going to take a little while. For example, if we want to get low-G fungi, which is going to give us a fungal farm where we can create food, we need a thousand research. So it's going to take three days and some change. If we wanted to get, for example, the advanced Martian engines, three days and some change after low-G fungi. So I think what we'll do is we'll try and prioritize research in a way that's going to benefit us the most. I do think getting low-G fungi is pretty good, but let's see. Do we want money? I don't know that we need it right now. Do we want engineers and geologists to have plus 10 performance when working in their, in their specialities? I don't know that we need it right now. But what I think we do need is Explorer AI, which is going to give us 100 research per soul for every RC Explorer. In fact, I'm going to make that the priority right now. Then after that, we have Logi Fungi. We have Drone Swarm, which means that drone hubs are constructed with an additional two drones. Logi Hydrosynthesis is going to give us a polymer factory and a fuel refinery. And then Hydroscopic Vaporators is going to give us an upgrade for moisture evaporators, meaning water production is increased by 50%. And that'll be the first five things that we go ahead and research. Now, the next things I want to go ahead and build are going to be these guys right here. These are power accumulators. This is where we're going to store the power that gets generated by the Sterling generators, which, by the way, it looks like we can change the skins on these to make them a little bit more interesting looking. So let's change... Well, if I can, I'd like to change all of them. I'm not too sure that I can. So we'll tell you what, let's go for a little bit of a pattern here. We'll change the ones on the outside. We'll change these ones. And then I think I can go ahead and I can open all of them. And that actually looks kind of interesting. I like that a lot. And having these things open will actually generate more power than having them closed. However, if they're open, they are more vulnerable to dust contamination. So we're going to have to be careful and make sure they don't stay open in a dust storm. Now, I should probably mention these power accumulators aren't even going to get built because they need concrete and we don't have concrete. So we're going to have to build a concrete extractor. And this thing is pretty simple. It's going to take two machine parts and five metals. We can just go ahead and sort of throw it down here, for example, or we could throw it over here. And actually, I think over here would be better. Because if we look at the stats on the right, there's 1,434 concrete available right here. Whereas here, ooh. Okay, yeah, this is this is, this is is great. That's great, but we'll just, I'm not interested. I'm trying to build a thing here. Uh, whereas right here has 663. So let's build a concrete extractor. And let's just put it right about there. That seems like a good place for it. And because it's a prefab, it's not going to take materials. My drones can just go and deal with it. Now, it is worth mentioning, we are going to have to connect some power lines over to this thing. But before we even do that, I kind of want to make my drones able to go to more places. Well, actually, do I? Because here's the thing. If I go in here and I build myself some drone hubs, that's great. It's going to control drones, allocate them to different tasks. That's cool. We have two prefabs for it as well. That's absolutely fantastic. But if I wait and I get drone swarm, then what I can do is I can get some extra drones from the drone hubs. So we might we might want to wait. We might want to wait. That might be something we want to do. And I might I might actually hold off on that. So what I'll do instead is I'll just go ahead and start to connect some things together. So let's get some power cables coming out here. We'll have them just go pretty much straight across the map here. And we'll have them sort of run. Let's see. We can have them run down here and into there. And that'll give us a power connection from the generators to the good old, uh, what do you call it? Concrete extractor. That'll give us some concrete production, which means we can start building the power accumulators. 
Although around this thing, we probably want some storage. So let's get ourselves a dumping site. I think that's probably fair enough. It's, wait, too far from a drone commander. Is this? Ooh, ooh, hello. What is this? The message screen is dark and only a vague silhouette of a bold man can be seen. The man speaks with a modulated voice. I'm not going to do a modulated voice. <laughs> commander, we have an offer for you. Recently, our organization has run into severe problems with one of our more delicate projects. We want you to take care of it. All in all, the mysterious man wants you to shelter a number of clone applicants in your project. No questions asked. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm going to take that. And that's probably... I, I don't know if it's a good idea, but we're going to do that. <laughs> we're going to take the clone applicants. I don't know if cloning this early on is a good idea, but we're going to take them. Also, this thing's now up and running. All right. Let me go ahead and get what I wanted here. I want to get myself some concrete depots, and I'm going to go... I know how to open the build menu, thank you. Uh, we'll put one there, and we'll put another one there, and we'll put maybe another one there. So we can store some concrete next to the concrete extractor. But we are going to need some dumping sites as well. So let's go ahead and put one there, and we'll put another one there. And that's essentially where the waste material can go from this thing. And now that this is up and running, like I said, we should see the power accumulators get built in no time at all. So now that these things are up and running, the next thing I'm going to want to do is start looking towards, well, other things that we can build. A sensor tower, for example, is going to boost our scanning speed, especially for nearby sectors, and it's going to give us a uh, an advance warning for disasters. So let's go ahead and just build this thing. Honestly, I'm just going to tuck it back there. There's nothing else I'm going to build in that space anyway. So we'll just get that thing built back there. I will not worry too much about it. In terms of research, we have about 19 hours left on Explorer AI, which means our research per sol is going to go from 3 to 400, which is absolutely fantastic. And then I guess we can also start having a bit of a look at some other things. The drone hubs, for example. I, I, I On one hand, I do want to wait, but... I'm also a little bit impatient, and I really like the idea of, for example, throwing a drone hub up into this little space, because what this is going to do is give us drones that can go up into all of that space, which is great. That's exactly what we want. So we'll have a drone hub up there, and then if we wanted to, we could throw a drone hub sort of down here, or we can throw a drone hub down here, but I'm thinking that right about probably here is going to be a pretty good spot for another drone hub. So we'll put it there. And because it's a prefab, again, it'll get built in no time at all. And what we can do is just very, very simply run some power cables out to it. In fact, we can just go something pretty, pretty straightforward like this. And then for this guy, we could run some power cables straight towards the rocket if we really wanted to. But I think I'll just sort of, well... Yeah, I'll bring them. I'll I'll bring them straight down towards the rocket, so that we're not going over that metal uh, deposit right there. Now I don't want to connect it directly to the rocket. That's obviously not exactly ideal. So let's see what we can go for. We could sort of go. Over, in fact, we will go around it, and we'll just connect it to there. Bit of a weird way to do the cable, but regardless, it means that the drone hub's going to be up and working. This one's also up and working. Oh no, it's not. Let's prioritize that to make it. You know get up and working a little bit quicker and we just got the research done so now we have 400 research per soul and we got four drones from these guys as well so really it you know four drones six drones it's whatever we got these things up and running and that's kind of what's important especially since it does give us some extra space to go and sort of work in and i can go one further with that because what i could do is i think i might not actually have them i don't think i do have them i think it's a different it's a different starting condition that would give me some uh, drone hub extender things which means i could go further with those but that's whatever we have the drone hubs up and going so that's that's what's important i guess since i can't extend the range of them the next step is going to be to start looking towards well i suppose a bit of fuel wouldn't hurt but it needs water so we're looking at life support. 
So what I'm thinking I'll do for life support is I'm going to avoid going too crazy with it. Because if I really wanted to, I could go in here and I could build myself, you know, a whole bunch of moxies. And these guys produce oxygen, except during dust storms. And I could build myself a bunch of moisture evaporators as well. But we don't necessarily have all of the materials to do that. So we'll keep it simple and we'll use the prefabs. So we're going to put a moxie right there. And then we're going to head up this way. And we're going to put a moisture evaporator right about there. And then we'll grab another one. And we'll put another moisture evaporator right about there. And they do have to be spaced out. So having them spaced out means they'll work the way we want them to work. Having them on the power cable means they will immediately start working. But we do need to connect them to things because obviously, you know, there's storage involved here. So let's have a look at you. And let's see what we can do in terms of getting you an oxygen tank. And I think the easiest thing we can do here is put a tank say there alongside the power cable and for the water over here we can kind of just throw a water tower right in between these guys so that's pretty much what i'm thinking we're gonna do we'll throw a water tower i guess i think that's in between them it absolutely is we'll throw a water tower right there it's all prefab stuff so all i need to do now is throw a pipe right there and then we can just run a pipe straight across there that will connect to everything and we want these guys sort of connected together as well. So what I'm really going to do is I'm going to run a pipe from here, going all the way up to there. And then this can all connect to a dome at some point, which means we can supply a dome with oxygen from the moxie and then water from the moisture evaporators. And we can even look at this and we'll see this little blue thing will gradually go up as this fills with water. So it's a pretty good setup, to be honest. I'm I'm pretty pleased with it. We should see this all connect together as well, which we absolutely do. So that's that's good. That's oxygen. That's water. That's life support. That's life right there is what that is. Now, we have a basic dome prefab. And this is where things start getting kind of interesting. This is where we start to see the potential for people. So what I'm thinking I want to do is... I kind of want to put my dome up here because there is a vista and a vista is going to improve the comfort of all res residents when in the radius of a dome. So essentially, I can throw a dome right here and people are going to love it is what they're going to do. So that's kind of going to be my plan. And I think we'll just build it. I think we'll just get ourselves get ourselves a dome. So let's uh, let's see what kind of rotation do we want on this? I think I think this is probably fine. We'll put the dome right there. We can go ahead. We can bring a power cable straight to there and it's already getting built. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Let's also bring some pipes out here so that we can get the uh, the water going into the dome as well. And any second now, there it is. Beautiful. You love to see it. And I also love that I can customize it. We've got this sort of Jurassic World looking thing. We've got this Jurassic World looking thing. And then we have, I believe, this one, which I absolutely adore. Oh my God, we've got 18 hours until a cold wave? A cold wave is imminent when most of our machinery is designed and able to function in such low temperatures. Wait, while most of our machinery is designed and able to function in such low temperatures, if a building outside stops working for more than a soul, it will freeze and may not be repaired until after the cold wave has lifted. Cold waves will put an extra strain on the electrical grid and buildings will consume more electricity. Oh boy. So the good news is research is still coming along nicely. We're actually working on low G fungi right now. After that, we're going to be looking at low G hydrosynthesis, which will get us the polymer factory and fuel refinery. Then we start getting the hydroscopic evaporators, which is an upgrade for the moisture evaporators, at which point we're going to go for autonomous sensors, which means the sensor tower is no longer going to need power or maintenance. And then we're going into productivity training. Now, I wasn't too interested in this earlier, but I've realized that giving plus 10 performance to engineers and geologists is probably a good idea since we do have a dome now and we do want to bring people in here sooner than later. And I'm also going to use this dome as a way to demonstrate, and this is something I'm so excited about, uh, demonstrate the trains. Because here's the thing. 
we can go into production and we can build a metals extractor. We can build it right here. And that's a great spot for it. But it's quite far away from the dome and it requires colonists to function. Now, they're not going to run that distance, especially with some of the modifiers that I have on this game. So I'm going to use a train to get them out there. And to be completely honest, I would be so tempted to just go ahead and try and find somewhere else for them to go. But this is the only metals deposit. So this is this is the one that we're dealing with. And because of one of my other modifiers, in fact, you know what? I'm just going to I'm going to put this thing a little bit further away from this metals deposit just so I can, you know, get a train that comes out here. It's a bit silly, but I'm going to do it. So it's going to it's going to be it could be right there. I'm going to put it right there. Okay, so we're going to get that thing built. Oh, oh, it's cold. Oh, it is cold. Can I can I see the temperature anywhere? Is is that a thing? It's also going to be a three day cold wave. That's a bit brutal. That is a bit brutal. I guess now is as good a time as any to start looking at buildings for the dome as well. And I'm thinking what we'll do is throw a living complex right there and a living complex right there. Now, this vista is going to help my colonists to be a little bit less miserable, which is going to be very good for us. But I do also want to look at perhaps getting a nursery. Well, we actually probably don't need a nursery right away. A school wouldn't be terrible, but research, I think, is something that I absolutely do want. So I'm going to build I'm going to build one research lab. And I'm only going to build one. I'm going to put it right there as well. Because what I can do is leave some space for some... What do you call them if I can see them anywhere? Is it infrastructure? It is not infrastructure. There's a way to connect domes together. Passages. So I could build one there that goes to another dome eventually. And I think that would be kind of cool. So, that's going to be some extra research in this dome. What we can do is go ahead and maybe get ourselves a small space bar. It's going to provide some rest and relaxation and fancy cocktails. It services relaxation, drinking, and social. That doesn't seem like a bad idea. We could throw a diner, which is going to be dining, social, and food. So let's let's put a diner in there. I think a diner is a, is a pretty good idea. I think an infirmary would be a pretty good idea as well just to make sure everyone's okay i think we could we could put a gym in there as well that would probably keep them quite happy a grocer that's an important one uh so we'll put the grocer let's say back there and what else have we got a small art store a place to purchase authentic martian works of art consumes polymers on each visit i'm gonna say no to that one <laughs> that seems like a pretty bad idea and then the amphitheater let's see Social, relaxation, and luxury. We don't have enough polymers to build it, though. In fact, a lot of things in here require polymers, it turns out. Security station. Counters crime by renegades. Reduces sanity loss from disasters as well. Ooh. Okay. Needs a lot of guys per work shift, though. What else have we got? We got some decorations. Relaxation, exercise, playing. I think we'll just go for a pond back there and then a little fountain in there as well, just to keep the place kind of nice. And then we'll see what else we can build in these two remaining sectors later on. But I have just had another realization because we did manage to research low G fungi. And we can also research soil adaptation, which is going to let me build a farm, which will produce food. It's an in-dome building, which is more work efficient and requires no power. I will queue that up, although I'm not 100% sure we necessarily need it. Because here's what I'm thinking, right? We can build some fungal farms out here. Now, yes, it's far away from the domes, but I can just have a train station, right? So what I can do is go to infrastructure. I can go to station. And then anything within this radius is essentially going to be something that we can have workers come to. So I'm going to put this thing like say there and then i can put some fungal farms around it so i'll put one right there and i want the other one which by the way these are prefabs so i can just have these guys do whatever but i can do something like this probably and that'll actually have a power connection as well 
we can go ahead and put some track between them. Well, I think they're going to have to be built first, but it really shouldn't take long since they are prefabs. So we can go ahead and say, give me some track from there over to there. We'll get the track built. And that is how we're going to get people out here. That seems like a good way to do it. Oh, this is bad news. We've got the metals extractor broken down already. And this drone hub has broken down as well. Now, this guy's going to need some electronics. This guy is going to need some, I believe that is mechanical parts. Not 100% sure. Yeah, machine parts. So what we might have to do here is go ahead and have this guy maybe load up on some resources. Let's have you load on... I suppose some electronics and we'll go ahead and we can unload that resource just up this way. So that way, in fact, you know what would have been a better idea is probably getting some machine parts as well. So load resources, uh, let's see, machine parts, please get loaded up on those and then we'll just unload everything sort of here-ish. What? Electrostatic dust storm. What the hell is an electrostatic dust? What? What? A dust storm is set to hit the colony soon. It will cause damage to pipes and cables. Oh boy. Electrostatic dust storm. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Oh man, we got a lot of things breaking around here. Man, this electrostatic storm is really doing a number on us, but the good news is my fungal farms are done. My train tracks are done. So now we just need to get ourselves a train, which is going to be, well, 30. It's it's going to need 30 metal. It's going to need five electronics. We don't have those electronics, so we're going to have to get them. And the way that we're going to get them is going to be by requesting a supply pod. So let's go ahead and say we want a good chunk of electronics. We want a good chunk of polymer. And let's see. I don't think we need more drones. I don't think we need more metal. Let's request a few more electronics. Because I think polymer is something we're going to be able to get relatively soon. So we'll get that launched. It will be here in no time at all. And then, well, we're going to build ourselves a train. And then once we have a, have a train, well, hopefully we can supply water to this dome. And then hopefully... A very big hopefully, but definitely hopefully we can start bringing some people up here and get them moving back and forth to the metals extractor and to the fungal farms via train, which is the whole point of the Martian Express content creator pack. And there it is. We've got a little supply pod. We can go ahead and we can get rid of that thing as well. And we should in theory. What's wrong with all of you guys? What's wrong with this little drone? Malfunctioned, carrying nothing. Oh, we got a lot of broken down drones around here. That's not good. The good news is though, that despite my power failing across the board, we can finally start fixing all of this because we did bring some polymer up here with us. And then we can also go ahead and start bringing some electronics up to build the train. So power should get back online shortly. And we've also just got autonomous sensors, which is good. So let me have a little look here. Let me have a look at production. Because we we can start making fuel refineries, which will consume five power, one water. And, I mean, fuel isn't the worst thing in the world to have. A polymer factory is going to need water and fuel. So let's build, I guess, a... I, I guess we'll build a fuel refinery. Uh, I'm not 100% sure where we build it. Maybe out here is where this thing could go. Build a little uh, little fuel refinery right about there. And we'll take some pipes out to it. So just something simple like this. And that will very quickly start producing uh, fuel. So we're going to need, obviously, a little bit of storage for it. So this guy right here. And we'll just sort of dump it. Let's see. We could go for something relatively simple. Maybe a little bit of storage right there. And a little bit of storage right about there so that'll be fuel production and storage and then we need polymers like i mentioned so the thing with polymer production is that it also needs workers so this could also be put out here by the train station and i'm gonna be honest i love that idea i love the idea 
of putting things out here for the uh, for the trains. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the polymer factory right there, and we'll go ahead and take the uh, take the pipes right back to it. Now, obviously, the slight issue is that uh, the materials to build this thing. Well, I think we have enough of all of them. Actually, we don't have all that much metal, but uh, we can get some. We can get the metal by going and saying that we want to gather resources from down here and we'll drop them off just up here. So we'll get them. We'll get the materials. We're going to need some machine parts and some concrete as well, but it's fine. We'll get that in good time as well. Our scientific analysis servers just crashed. We tried turning them off and on again, but the problem persisted after a reboot. While looking for the glitch, your data technicians discover the possibility to boost the performance of the program by running secondary analytical trials. Just this once. I want a hundred extra research. That's going to make things quite a bit easier for us, having now 500 research per soul. And that can go up as well. So that's, that's just getting things started. Now, I'll tell you what I'd also like to do. I'd like to go ahead and start dropping a bunch of this metal off up this way. Because in doing this, we're going to be able to build these pipes. And we're going to be able to fix all the things that are currently broken. Now, obviously, it would be nice to get the polymer factory up and going. That is something we can do. But here's what I'm going to do even before then. I'm going to bring passengers to Mars. It's time. It is time that we do this. So, the Athena 1 is going to launch. And we're going to bring passengers up here to the Red Planet. We're also going to have these drones go and fix everything that's broken. Because they are not going to have a reliable supply of oxygen if we don't do that. Including the Moxie. Or sorry, the Moisture Evaporator. We need the Moisture Evaporator fixed. We need the oxygen tank fixed. We need these pipes done. There's just a lot of things we need to get done. But there we go. We're now producing fuel. We have the moisture evaporators up and running. We have oxygen going, which is great. So let's get this thing done. We're going to need 10 concrete, 5 machine parts. So let me go and load some resources from right here. We'll load up some concrete. And then we'll go and load some machine parts as well, which... Do we have machine parts? We have, we have some machine parts. We'll go and get machine parts. So let's, let's get that done. I can't remember exactly how much it was we need. Wait, are you full? Oh, you are full. Okay, I'm going to have to tell you to, I guess, unload your resources up there, and then we'll go get the machine parts. And there we go. The polymer factory is up and running. So here's the next thing we're going to do. We have a train available. Let's go ahead and assign the train to this track. And there it goes. We have a train moving back and forth. It switches sides when it gets to the other station, but it's a little shuttle back and forth. Speaking of shuttles, though, we have the Athena 1. And we're going to land the Athena 1. I'm thinking here. It's a little bit away from the dome, but in theory, all of the passengers can hop off of it, hop on a train, and get to the dome. This is kind of exciting. I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. I want to see it come in. I want to see my passengers. I want to see my colonists. There they are. What are they doing? Are they going to the train? Oh my god, they're going to the train! <laughs> they're actually going to the train! I love it! Oh, I love it so much! <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah, there we go. Passengers all loading up. Is that train about to go? Oh, I love it. I love it. There's actually people on there. There's actually people on the train. They're coming over here. What are they doing? Are they hopping? Yeah, and there they go. And they're way in. Oh, I love it. I love that so much. Oh, I love that so much. That's so good. Okay. Tell you what I want to do. I want to get food storage over here. So I want a food, uh, a food depot, I guess, here and here. And that'll be fine. And then what we can do, and I mean, in theory, if I do this right. Hold on. Is this train of people on board? It does. Okay. So if I've done this right. We should see some of these jobs fill up at some point, right? This doesn't have power right now, which is fine. Do you have anyone on board? No. Okay. So it turns out we didn't see some of these jobs fill up right now. That's slightly concerning. Um, I'd like this to be a priority. I'm going to be honest. And there we go. Ooh. Did we just run out of power? 
Why do you guys not have... Oh, I never connected the power lines. <laughs> I never connected the... That's why they don't have power. I never connected the power lines. Okay. Let's, um... Let's bring some power out here. Since that's kind of a big deal. Oh, I love that so much. I love that they're actually coming out and working. That is so cool. And you know what I could even do here? Is I could shuffle these shifts around. So you guys are working in the afternoon. You guys are going to work at night. So the morning train is going to have the guys that work these two jobs, then the afternoon one, and then the evening one. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Oh, I love that so much. Full of hope oh, I really do. The, first the next 10 souls will be full of difficulties and dangers. Yeah, we can't bring anyone else to Mars for 10 days, but... Oh, look at them! Oh my god, hello. The imposing clone intercepts you in the dark alley. He throws you a package and vanishes. If it was a bomb, it would have exploded by now, so you decide to risk it. You open the package and find a couple of notes. The first one is a check for quite the sum. The other is a letter. Commander, we're grateful for your aid in the past, but we cannot live peacefully. We were designed to fight, to conquer, and we will. Someday, we could be enemies, but for now, while we're friends, accept our final gift. And from now on, we're even. So all officer clones become renegades and I get a hundred million dollars. Oh boy. Do we, do we, do we have criminal clones amongst us now? Is that what that's trying to tell me? Is that there's, there's, there's clone criminals? Milestone achieved. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how I feel about, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about that. I really don't. But I'll tell you what I will do. Let's go here, let's go to cargo, and let's say that these trains can start moving food back and forward. Because that way, in theory, we can load food into the station, move it over here by train, and store it here by the dome. That's kind of cool. I'm really, I'm so excited about this. I really am. I love this. I love it so much. I'm so, I'm so pleased with, uh, with the little train. I know it's so simple, but just the little train going back and forward is so cool. And also, Atlas 1, which is this guy, could be set to leave. That's, that's an option. This guy really probably could be set to leave as well once we get the fuel for it. I don't know that I want this to leave, though, because then I don't have a drone commander for the middle of my, uh, my little colony here. So I don't know... I don't know if that's a good idea. Oh, no, this is actually very bad news. This station is broken down and needs machine parts, which we don't have, which means that I believe none of my none of my colonists can get to work. So I have gone ahead and requested a supply pod, which will help with that. It just has nothing but machine parts on board. But that is something I didn't consider, which means we're going to need to start looking into researching the way to make those machine parts, hopefully sooner than later. Also, being able to build drone hubs would be really nice. Also, drones moving faster would be really nice as well. So let's see. Do we want wind turbines? I don't know that we do. And then these things are going to need less fuel. Let's let's do that. I, I feel like this is a good little start. I feel like I've been ranting and rambling a little bit, but I feel like this is a really solid start, and you can kind of get an idea of what these trains look like, right? You can see how they sort of work. And here's the thing. You can research a large train station. You can have four different tracks, like, meeting in, in one place at some point, which I think is so cool. So I want to do more of this. I want to do more of the whole live in the dome, you know, we can build like an entertainment dome back here, but they work out here. I love that. I think that's so, so cool. So I, I really do want to do more of that. I also realize there's a bunch of anomalies out here. So let's just head out and set up to scan all of those. And then I guess we'll just send the, uh, the explorer back when he's done doing all of that. We've also got this guy, which we can go ahead and land there. And that should let me fix this thing and get food production back on the go, which is hopefully going to happen sooner than later. I probably should have requested some food in the supply pod, to be completely honest, because I'm pretty sure we're getting really, really low on it. Uh, so, yeah, it would have been 
that would have been a good idea. At least we're doing 2.9 food per soul there, 2.7 there, 1.4 polymer. And then this guy is... Well, this guy's not even working. This guy doesn't have enough workers to function, which isn't ideal, but I think... I mean, we're, we're getting metal from the, the transport thing anyway. Resources so I think I'd rather them. produce things that we don't have, such as food and polymer, when we can still go out and just get the metal. Now, we did just discover a breakthrough, which is autonomous hubs, which means drone hubs no longer require power or maintenance. That would be huge. So I'm going to throw that in there, and I'm going to have that be the next thing we get after soil adaptation. And then Moxie upgrades. I don't think we need this money, and I think having those guys move faster is good. So essentially, my hubs are going to be better. I'm also thinking, can I upgrade these guys? I absolutely can with some polymer. Okay, let's hit those upgrades and get a little bit of water production going. We can upgrade the Moxie eventually, and this guy is going to need fuel to get up and running. That's going to make things slightly complicated, because that means I need to set up a transport to bring fuel back and forth. So if I was to go down here, well, yeah, let's, let's, let's try a little something something here. If I go to storage, and I go to depot, and I say, give me a fuel depot uh, there for example. And then I go in and I say, give me a, not a universal one, give me a depot, give me a polymer depot, and put it, say, there. Can I then go ahead, grab my transport, and tell my transport that what I want them to do is load up on fuel, and then unload it over here. Is that a thing he's going to do? It absolutely is. So that's going to be a lot of fuel that we're moving back and forth, but it should mean that the polymer, the 3.2 polymer per day, is going to be a thing. We're also up to 600 research. What is this? Okay, I... Yep, yeah, lore, that's fine. Yeah, 600 research per day is beautiful news. So yeah, we are now moving fuel over here. We're going to start making polymer. We've got 4.8 food and 5 food per day right there. So this should be kind of huge. And there's some workers showing up as well. So that's kind of what we want to see. We're going to have some drones loading the fuel in here as well. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'm... Oh, and you know what? We can load up this rocket as well. So this thing will be able to get out of here at some point as well. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm actually... I am actually really pleased with this as a start. And it's weird that this is uh, this is considered to be just a start, but you know what? I'll take it. Hold on a minute. New trade route. What do you guys want? What do you What do you guys want? Hold on a minute. Offer resources. Basic. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. What? 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 What did they? What did they? <laughs> what did they want? Hold on a minute. Initiate trade. Oh, they want electronics. No. I thought you were giving me electronics. Get out of here. So as far as starts go, I am absolutely in love with what we've got done here so far. Hopefully you are as well. I know this has been a little bit different to some of the stuff we've done recently. This has been a little bit more slower paced than the likes of Software Inc. And, well, Software Inc. is about the only thing we've done recently. There are more videos coming on the channel, as per usual. We're getting back into the series that we haven't quite finished yet. But that is going to do us for today for Surviving Mars. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. And a huge thank you to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring this video and letting me check out the Martian Express that little bit early. It's, a, it's, it's something I wasn't expecting from Surviving Mars was trains. It's something you don't necessarily think you would it, want on Mars. But it turns out I kind of do. And I kind of dig it. And I'm really excited to throw a bunch of trains into a single large station and see what that kind of chaos looks like. So that's going to be something I'm looking to do in the sooner rather than later future. Whatever the case, that is going to do us for today. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye bye